To build a bunker capable of withstanding a nuclear explosion, it takes more than just digging a hole and pouring concrete. So, how do you create a shelter designed to survive the end of the world? To find out, let's step into the heart of one of these projects and uncover the process. It all begins with choosing the right location, a step that is never taken lightly. The ground must be stable, preferably in a remote area, far from urban centres or strategic points that could be targets in a conflict. Hills or natural rock formations are ideal, as they offer an extra layer of protection. Before a single grain of soil is moved, engineers conduct geotechnical studies, analysing the composition of the earth to confirm it can support the structure's weight. Once approved, excavation begins. Heavy machinery moves in, removing massive amounts of soil with a coordination that feels almost choreographed. Every scoop is precise, creating a deep, uniform cavity that will serve as the foundation of the bunker. This process can take weeks, depending on the size of the shelter and the terrain conditions, such as the presence of rock or underground water. Experienced operators handle the machines with skill, while supervisors monitor every move to ensure the base is flawless. But while the underground structure takes shape on site, a task just as crucial is happening elsewhere. In specialised workshops, the components that will give the bunker its strength and form are being built. Here, steel takes centre stage. Workers cut and shape panels made from high-strength steel, engineered to absorb impacts that would destroy conventional buildings. Each panel is reinforced with crossbeams, mathematically calculated to distribute forces evenly. Welding becomes an art of its own. Miles of seams are joined with surgical precision, since even a single floor could compromise the bunker's integrity. Skilled welders, equipped with protective masks and state-of-the-art tools, work in shifts to keep production moving. Every seam is inspected using technologies like ultrasound or x-rays, ensuring there are no cracks or imperfections. This level of detail is what allows these structures to withstand even catastrophic events. But being strong is not enough. A bunker must also be a livable, functional refuge. So how are these giant metal boxes transformed into habitable spaces? In the workshops, work doesn't stop at the structure. The panels are prepared to become a safe and comfortable environment. Layers of polyurethane foam are applied, a lightweight yet highly effective material that insulates against heat, cold and noise. This insulation is vital, as the bunker must maintain a stable temperature and shield its occupants from outside sounds that could cause stress. In addition, interior linings are installed based on the client's needs. Some prefer minimalist finishes with smooth surfaces and neutral colours, while others choose warmer details like wood-style panels or soft textures. At this stage, ducts for ventilation, electricity and plumbing are also integrated, designed to connect seamlessly at the construction site. Every component is labelled and precisely organised because during final assembly there is no room for error. Everything must fit perfectly. But there's one challenge that can't be ignored. These structures are heavy. Very heavy. Moving these components is nothing like loading a regular box. Transporting them requires surgical logistics. The steel panels, which can weigh hundreds of tonnes, are loaded onto specialised trucks built to handle extreme loads without compromising road safety. These vehicles often travel along narrow or rough roads, requiring expert drivers and carefully planned routes. At the excavation site, tall cranes take over. Each section is lifted and positioned with near millimetre accuracy, since a single mistake could delay the entire project. Ground workers, equipped with radios and helmets, coordinate every movement like an industrial dance. Once in place, the sections are connected to the life support system's pipes for drinking water, shielded electrical cables and ventilation ducts. These systems are not only functional but also redundant, with backups such as emergency generators and additional water tanks to ensure the bunker can operate in any scenario. But before we continue, let's pause for a moment. The modern world has seen countless conflicts. But have you ever wondered how long humans have been building bunkers to protect life? The answer takes us back to the 1950s during the Cold War. Faced with the looming threat of nuclear war between the United States and the Soviet Union, 
the urgent need for secure shelters emerged. One of the first and most iconic examples was the Cheyenne Mountain Complex in Colorado, a bunker carved into solid granite, built to withstand nuclear explosions and operate for weeks without external help. That project marked a turning point in survival engineering. Since then, bunkers have continued to evolve, integrating more advanced materials and technologies that make them increasingly resistant and livable. Back at the construction site, once the metal sections are installed, the sealing process begins. Panels are secured with high-strength bolts designed to withstand extreme pressure. Each connection is tested with specialised equipment to ensure a perfect airtight seal, blocking water, air or contaminants like radiation or chemicals. In this phase, ventilation systems play a crucial role. Equipped with HEPA filters and activated carbon, they purify the air from hazardous particles, ensuring a breathable environment. Access ladders and emergency exits are also installed, designed to be fully functional yet discreet, minimising the risk of detection. Every element from the angle of the stairs to the placement of ducts is precisely planned to maximise safety and efficiency. But one final step remains, shielding the exterior. The bunker's final layer of protection comes from a specialised concrete mix, reinforced with steel fibres, polymers or even ceramics. This blend is engineered to withstand explosions, direct impacts or structural collapse. It's poured in a continuous and carefully controlled process, using formwork to shape the structure while the concrete cures for days or even weeks. In some cases, additional composite layers are added, such as anti-radiation coatings or ballistic grade polymers, pushing the level of protection even higher. One critical feature that's often overlooked but essential in an extreme scenario is protection against electromagnetic pulses, or EMPs. These waves, triggered by nuclear detonations, can destroy electronic equipment in seconds. To prevent this, bunkers include Faraday cages, metal enclosures that surround the electrical systems and block the pulses. Every cable, from lighting to communication, is shielded with conductive materials. This way, even in the middle of a nuclear attack, radios, monitors and surveillance cameras can continue working, and this isn't a luxury communication systems make it possible to monitor the outside world and stay in contact with other shelters or authorities, which can mean the difference between total isolation and coordinated survival. But survival does not rely on technology alone. How people live inside also matters. That's why the interior of a bunker is transformed into a livable space where every detail is designed to ensure both functionality and comfort. Common areas include tables, chairs and spaces for group activities created to encourage interaction and reduce stress. The sleeping quarters, though compact, are optimised with ergonomic beds and smart storage solutions. Some bunkers even feature a security room or panic room built with reinforced walls and high security locks prepared to withstand a potential breach. At the heart of the interior are the life support systems, oxygen tanks, cutting edge air filters and advanced water recycling units allow occupants to live for months without depending on the outside world. Well-organised storage rooms hold non-perishable food, medical kits, tools and spare parts to ensure complete autonomy. In the most modern designs, self-sufficiency goes even further. Renewable energy systems like solar panels or wind turbines are installed and carefully hidden to avoid detection. These systems power the shelter through shielded cables, maintaining a stable electricity flow. Water is also recycled with advanced technology, making it usable again for drinking, cooking or hygiene. Some bunkers even feature hydroponic gardens inside, producing fresh vegetables that enhance nutrition and bring a sense of normalcy to a place where every resource matters. But the security of a bunker does not end with its walls. In an environment where a single breach could be fatal, surveillance becomes an absolute priority. Advanced systems are installed, combining high-resolution cameras, motion detectors and perimeter alarms, all synchronised to detect any intrusion. The access doors, made of reinforced steel, feature biometric or mechanical locks allowing entry only to authorised individuals. In some cases, extra defence layers are added hidden barriers, traps or even camouflage systems 
that let the bunker blend in with its surroundings. Covered by soil, rocks or vegetation, it becomes almost invisible from the outside. In a world where war can erupt in seconds, these measures are not exaggerations. They are necessities, because this is not just a shelter, it is the final line between chaos and survival. And that's how nuclear bunkers are built. Tell me, what did you think of the process? Let me know in the comments. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is the perfect time. Hit like if you enjoyed the video. Here are other manufacturing processes you'll love. Just click one and enjoy. See you next time.